Hi guys, welcome back to my kitchen. Today I am getting started on some Christmas baking. I love this time of year and I'm excited to share these recipes with you. So all of the recipes that I'm making today are either naturally gluten-free or they can be made with regular all-purpose flour or a gluten-free all-purpose flour blend. So as always, I'll have the full recipes in the description box down below. I have a lot that I'd like to get done today, so let's get started. The first recipe I'm starting on are some gluten-free sugar cookies. If you don't need these to be gluten-free, you can just use regular all-purpose flour in these. And I wanna start these out first because the dough is going to need to chill. So I have two cups of butter in the bowl of my stand mixer and I'm adding in two cups of sugar. And then we're gonna get that cream together. Next I'm adding in two eggs and two egg yolks and we're going to save those egg whites and we're going to be using those in another recipe in this video. And a splash of vanilla and we'll get this mixed together and then we'll add in the baking powder and the flour. Next I'm adding four and two thirds of a cup of Bob's Red Mill gluten-free all-purpose flour. Again, you could use regular all-purpose and a half teaspoon of baking powder. The dough is ready to be rolled out, so I did a double batch. I'm going to split this into two, and I'm gonna roll this out on some parchment paper because after I have rolled this out, we are going to let it chill in the fridge for at least half an hour, and that's just gonna make it really easy to transfer into the fridge. sugar cookie dough is all rolled out and ready to be chilled so I'm gonna get this into the fridge for about 30 minutes and while we're waiting for this I'm gonna get started on some iced gingerbread oatmeal cookies and that dough also needs to chill so once we get that dough into the fridge we will start to cut these out and get them into the oven for the iced gingerbread oatmeal cookies the base of the recipe is really similar to my oatmeal chocolate chip and oatmeal raisin cookies that I've shared here on my channel before, um, just with a few tweaks to give them that gingerbread flavor. So I am adding a cup of butter softened to the bowl of my stand mixer, and I'm going to be adding in three quarters of a cup of cane sugar and a cup of brown sugar. That is all creamed together, so I am adding in two tablespoons of molasses, a good splash of vanilla, and then we are going to do two whole eggs and two egg yolks. Get that mixed up and then we'll add in our dry ingredients. Next I'm adding in two and a half cups each of rolled oats and oat flour. If you're not familiar, oat flour is one of my favorite flours to use for gluten-free baking and it is just rolled oats blended up in a blender until it forms a fine powder. And 
and then a teaspoon of baking soda. Two teaspoons of ground ginger. One and a half teaspoons of cinnamon. A quarter teaspoon of ground cloves. A half teaspoon of salt. And then a half teaspoon of ground nutmeg. I'm just going to estimate this. I'm using whole nutmeg for this. And it has so much more flavor than ground nutmeg at the store. Then we're gonna get this all mixed together. And then we're going to chill this dough for at least half an hour in the fridge. My sugar cookie dough has been chilling for about 30 minutes and now I'm just getting these cut out into some shapes and I have my oven preheated to 375. Once I get these onto some baking sheets, these are going to bake for between 7 and 9 minutes. I'm using stoneware so I'm going to add a couple minutes to that. For me this will probably be closer to 11 minutes. Okay, so I have a few trays of those gluten-free sugar cookies out of the oven now. I have one more that's just about done here, and I'm letting those cool on the baking sheets. I find the, that the gluten-free version tends to be a little bit more fragile until they're cooled, so that just helps prevent anything from breaking. That is the last batch, so I'm gonna pull those out and then we're going to finish up on the iced oatmeal gingerbread cookies. So this cookie dough has been chilling for about 40 minutes now and I'm just gonna get this scooped into some dough balls and I'm gonna set them up on my pastry board because I still have all of my baking sheets occupied with the sugar cookies and I just wanna let them cool a little bit longer. That way these will be ready to go as soon as those sugar cookies are done. The first batch of the iced oatmeal gingerbread cookies are about to go into the oven, and these are going to bake at 350 for 11 minutes. Again, since I'm using the stoneware, I'm just gonna add a couple minutes extra to that. The first batch of these oatmeal gingerbread cookies are out of the oven, and I'm just allowing these to cool on the baking sheet for just a couple minutes so they can set up, and then I'll transfer them over to a cooling rack. I still have a couple more rounds of the oatmeal gingerbread cookies to bake. Um, and as those are baking and cooling, we need to let those fully cool before we ice them. I'm gonna get started on another cookie recipe and that is a oat flour chocolate peppermint crinkle cookie. So for this, we are going to need a half cup of butter melted and then we need two room temperature eggs. If you're like me and forgot to remove your eggs from the fridge, um, just get a glass of warm water and you can place your eggs in there for a few minutes and that will bring them down pretty quickly to room temperature. So in a bowl I have half a cup of melted butter and I'm not using my stand mixer for this just because it's a smaller batch and it's not entirely necessary. My stand mixer is pretty big um, and sometimes it just doesn't work as well for smaller batch recipes. So to that I'm going to add a half cup of lightly packed brown sugar. I'm 
my two room temperature eggs. And a teaspoon of peppermint extract. If you wanted these to be just chocolate crinkle cookies, then you can leave the peppermint extract out or substitute in vanilla extract. Okay, so I'm gonna get this all mixed together well and then we'll start adding in our dry ingredients. I'm also adding a half cup of cocoa powder. and then a teaspoon of baking powder and a half teaspoon of salt. Last thing I'm adding is a half cup of chocolate chips. We're gonna get this all mixed in and then this dough is also going to chill in the fridge for about 30 minutes. While the dough for the crinkle cookies is chilling in the fridge, I'm getting started on some gluten-free shortbread. You can substitute in regular all-purpose flour for this. Again, I'm using Bob's, and we need one and three quarters cups of the all-purpose flour blend. And then I'm also going to be adding in a cup of powdered sugar. This is homemade powdered sugar. I went to the store the other day and I was looking at organic powdered sugar. It was $9 a pound, which is just, insane so i've been making my own brown sugar and i knew that you could make your own powdered sugar at home but i hadn't tried it before so that's what i did for my christmas baking it's just crazy so that's what i'm using today if you haven't made it before it's just sugar blended with um a little bit of cornstarch one cup sugar to one tablespoon of cornstarch you can also use arrowroot powder And then I'm adding a half teaspoon of salt. And I'm gonna get that just stirring, oops, stirring together in the stand mixer. Next, I'm adding in a splash of vanilla and 14 tablespoons of cold butter. And we're just gonna mix this on medium low until it kind of comes together. So the dough is going to start out by looking really powdery and crumbly and like something is a little off, but it will come together. So you just have to give it a little bit of time. It took about five minutes uh, for me to get the dough to this consistency. So I have my dough rolled out to about a third of an inch thick. I'm using a cookie cutter to cut these. You could use a knife and then I am going to transfer these onto a baking sheet and they're going to chill in the fridge for at least 30 minutes. And while we're waiting for these, we are going to get to baking the chocolate crinkle cookies. For the chocolate peppermint crinkle cookies, I have the oven preheated to 350, and I'm just using a small cookie scoop to portion this cookie dough into dough balls, and then I'm rolling it really heavily in some of that homemade powdered sugar. Now, these are going to bake at 350 for about eight to 10 minutes. So 
So while we are waiting for those chocolate cocoa cookies to finish baking, I've got a couple more rounds of those to do. I am going to get the oatmeal gingerbread cookies iced because they have fully cooled now. Now these are delicious just as is. You don't need to add the icing. Um, I don't think they need it. However, it makes them look really pretty. So I am going to be doing this. So we need a cup and a half of powdered sugar and then just a little tiny splash, probably about a half teaspoon of vanilla extract and one to two tablespoons of milk. And we're just gonna whisk that together really well and it's gonna form a really thick frosting. And this is the consistency that we are looking for. So you have the option to drizzle this on the cookies or you can just uh, dip the tops of the cookies directly into the frosting. For the shortbread, I'm spacing them about an inch apart on a baking sheet, and these are going to bake at 350 for about 15 minutes until they're just set. I just did one more clean of the kitchen, and we have some shortbread in the oven right now. While we're waiting for that to come out, I'm gonna get started on the almond crescent cookies, and then we have one more recipe I wanna get done tonight after that. To a bowl, I'm adding three tablespoons of softened butter, and then a cup of almond flour. and then three tablespoons of powdered sugar. An eighth of a teaspoon of salt. and a small splash of vanilla, and I'm gonna get this mixed together really well. And then I'm adding in a third of a cup of chopped pecans. And then I'm just gonna portion out this dough using a one tablespoon cookie scoop. And then I'm gonna form those into logs and then into crescents. And we're gonna space those out about an inch apart on a baking sheet. And these are gonna bake at 325 for about 20 minutes. The almond crescent cookies are out of the oven now and they're just cooling for a little bit. I'll let them cool for at least 15 minutes or so and then I'm going to toss those in some powdered sugar. I accidentally overbaked those a little bit. They'll be fine. They're not too brown but a little bit more brown than I would like them. I think I accidentally set the timer for the wrong amount of time. Um, they're supposed to bake for 20 minutes. Now I am going to get started on some meringues. I love to make meringues because it's a great way to use up extra egg whites. As you saw earlier in the video, um, quite a few of the recipes that I made today call for egg yolks. So I'm gonna use all those extra egg whites to make the meringues. So meringues can be a little bit finicky. So you're gonna wanna make sure whatever bowl you are making them in is really clean, no residue of any sort. So to a bowl, I am adding four room temperature egg whites. Now I'm doing this in my stand mixer just because it makes it really easy, but you can do this with a hand mixer as well. 
to the egg whites, I am adding a half teaspoon of cream of tartar and then an eighth of a teaspoon of salt. I'm going to turn my mixer on to low speed and once the egg white mixture is foamy, I'm going to increase the speed to high and I'm slowly, a tablespoon at a time, going to add a cup of cane sugar to the egg white mixture. Now, once the mixture has increased in volume, it's looking thick and shiny and stiff peaks will form, it is ready to go. So this is the consistency that we're looking for. It is nice and thick and shiny and the sugar has fully dissolved. So I am going to stir in a little bit of vanilla extract and then I'm going to fill this into a piping bag and I'm going to pipe the meringues onto a parchment lined baking sheet. They can be pretty close together because they aren't going to spread in the oven. I am calling it a day. So the meringues are in the oven and they are baking at 225 for an hour. Once that hour is up, I'm going to turn off the oven. I'm not going to open the door or anything and I'm going to allow those to fully cool in the oven. The only other thing that I want to get done tonight is I want to finish off those almond crescent cookies. So I'm just going to toss those in a little bit of powdered sugar and then tomorrow I'll come back and get the sugar cookies decorated and I'll share with you how the meringues turned out. Hi guys, it is the next day. The meringues turned out great last night and I am just about to get started on icing the sugar cookies. So as far as icing goes with sugar cookies, I much prefer a buttercream to royal icing. Royal icing is nice because it hardens up really well. However, it just doesn't taste as good as buttercream. Obviously it's butter and sugar. You can't go wrong with that. So I'll share with you the best recipe that I've found for a buttercream that does still set up pretty well. So that way when you're packaging them, they're not gonna get all smushed up. To the bowl of my stand mixer, I am adding 12 tablespoons of cold butter and I'm gonna turn this on to medium high and this is going to beat for about four minutes until it's really creamy. Next, I am going to turn the mixer down to low speed and I'm slowly going to add in five cups of powdered sugar and I'm just gonna scrape down the sides to make sure I get all of that butter in there. Don't be alarmed by how clumpy it looks. It's gonna come together. We're just gonna add some cream in and some vanilla extract. I'm gonna turn this back on to low and as it's mixing, I'm going to add a tablespoon of heavy cream at a time and then three teaspoons of vanilla extract and just a pinch of salt. how it looks all mixed together. I'm going to divide this into a few bowls and we're going to color it. I'm trying out this color garden uh, plant-based food coloring. So we'll see how this goes. With a plant-based food coloring like this, you're just not going to get the same intensity as um, an artificial dye, which is totally fine by me. So the red is probably going to stick right around here. The green food coloring smells like dirt. It is colored with red cabbage juice and turmeric. I don't think I'm gonna add any more because I don't wanna change the flavor of the frosting. 
Nobody wants a cookie that tastes like vegetables. So there's the green. I'm gonna get some piping bags all ready to go, get them filled up, and then we'll start to ice. That wraps up our Christmas baking for 2023. I may try to sneak in a couple more recipes if time permits, but we got the bulk, if not all, of it done yesterday. Thank you guys so much for spending a couple days here in my kitchen with me. As always, your support is so appreciated. And if you do celebrate, I hope you have a wonderful Christmas. Mm -hmm.